How we walk the line between work and home is an interesting thing, especially if you have found success within your designated profession or your entrepreneurial venture. As you grow within your chosen industry, as you move up the ladder financially, it's very often that you find yourself growing personally. Who you have to become in order to gain traction within your professional life ends up influencing who you are privately. We begin to view ourselves through a different lens. We finally acknowledge that we have earned qualities and traits that can only be born through hardship and perseverance. Now, this isn't to be confused with being unpleasantly arrogant. This is simply recognizing that if you took a step back and looked at yourself as if you were another person, you know that you could confidently say, I'm impressed with them. Though the predominant feeling amongst people about who they are at work is to get there, get done, and get out as fast as possible, those of us who feel passion and drive behind our work know that the professional characteristics we carry outside of the home inevitably follow us back to our homes because we have internalized those qualities. My name is Chaudhry, and today I'm showing you how we created an executive home office that demands respect yet embodies warmth at the same time. If you're a returning subscriber, hit the thumbs up. If you're new here, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be a subscriber. Remember that if you would like my help in designing your room, you can have that help by clicking the link in the description below. Saud had filled out a contact form with us stating that he was purchasing a new home. It was in the process of being built and therefore he didn't have photos. He did have a floor plan, however. So it was our job to make this room come to life before it physically existed. His goal was to create a home office that was masculine and industrial. However, this was to be a home version of an executive's office, which meant it needed to maintain a refined look. The office was to provide an easy transition when coming home for the person who spends their time within the executive level of their corporate space. It would be warm, welcoming, personalized, yet still have the feeling of holding a certain caliber of status. Our approach to this was to lean more into the dark and polished theme while sprinkling in industrial accents. Saud did have some requests for us to incorporate within the design. He wanted a sturdy, sizable executive desk, an ergonomic office chair, a small sofa, a bookshelf display, the addition of texture to the walls, shades of gray, black, brown, or navy, and a light fixture, which could serve as a statement piece. So here is what we came up with. I think we nailed what we were aiming for on this one. There's always an emotional response that one has when entering a new room. And if class and a respectable atmosphere were the goals, this did just that. We, of course, have the overarching theme of moodiness with the darker, desaturated tones, and this is balanced through the use of a lighter wood flooring paired with a light woven rug. The flooring you're seeing here is by Bruce Flooring, and it is part of their Forest Rain Collection. It's a white oak with a stain that they call Tranquil Warmth. Something that can make a huge difference in a room is the width of the individual planks on the floor. These are seven inch wide planks. They're about three times the size of your traditional wood flooring planks. If you have a large room with taller ceilings, wider planks will assist in continuing that stately appearance. Two things happening on the art wall to direct your attention to. The first being the wainscoting. When adding trim to walls, it's very common for people to create a small repetition of boxes filling the wall entirely. I'm assuming that their thought process is that if I'm going to add molding and trim, I'm going to do a lot so that this wall is definitely not boring. What I would encourage you to do is to treat every wall differently. Is it a large wall? Is it a small wall? Is it tall? Is it short? Is it wide? Is it narrow? What's it being used for? Create a trim that aesthetically matches what the wall is already telling you it wants. We knew that artwork was going to go on this wall. The wall is huge, so why not mimic the look of a large picture frame? It's simple yet effective. The second thing on this art wall, the photo frames, by merely adjusting them to a slightly different alignment than what you would typically see, it creates the illusion of this swirling effect. It's a spiraling pattern. It's something different, 
it's something interesting. There's something that I want to mention about the floor to ceiling bookshelf. These of course show up in a lot of home office and library designs, especially for those that are attempting to create a traditional or an academia look. They're tall in stature, they're captivating, even more so when they're decorated well. But if you're looking to add a bit more modernity to them, a way to add more visual depth, basic strip lighting pressed to the top corner can highlight your prized possessions, your unique pieces, your memorabilia, and create moody shadows that otherwise would not be there. It's an easy addition, and it's something to consider. If you're noticing the artwork above the desk, it is made by an Italian artist named Giuseppe Birni. He focuses on contemporary art that has a lot of texturized patterns. You'll find that much of his work contains um, earthy color palettes. It was the perfect addition for a room that was using browns, blacks, golds, and needed some texture. Speaking of the golds, the chandelier hangs boldly and at center stage. It certainly serves its purpose as being a statement piece. When you walk into the room or sit at the couch, this brushed gold finish acts as a nucleus to the rest of the design. It's as if it has a gravitational pull. It's highlighting the gold frame around Giuseppe's art piece, the amber strip lighting that we placed in the bookshelves, and the legs of the coffee table. The two plants are placed at opposite corners of the room. I've mentioned this in previous designs, but it's an excellent way to create some additional balance in a space. Given the rest of the room has a desaturated theme to it, it made sense to choose darker leafed plants. You have now seen the creation of an executive's home office that blends his professional life with his home life. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you feel like sticking around a while, feel free to subscribe. See you on the next one.